All right, we're here at Whiteman Airport in Los Angeles. And as you guys know, I'm a professional cinematographer. And today I am going to supervise a color grading session for a uh, part of a documentary that I shot. It's a true crime documentary that just premiered on Netflix. It's called Why Did You Kill Me? And it's about a devastated family who uses social media to track down the killers of a young woman. The part that I shot was a bunch of recreations of a crime and uh, I shot a bunch of miniatures uh, with like motion control stuff. I usually shoot commercials, but this was an interesting and technically challenging project to work on. So we're gonna do the final color correction and color grade on that material. And uh, the session is in Santa Monica. Traffic on the 405 freeway is notoriously bad, so I'm gonna skip that traffic and I'm gonna fly. You're probably curious like I was. Will I save time flying versus driving this short hop? And how much more expensive than driving would this be? Stay tuned to the end to find out. I'll break it all down. I brought my little scooter along with me. I'm gonna hop on that, uh, go around Santa Monica, and make it over the session, do a little bit of time there, and then hop in the plane and come back. right down departure east of five freeway approved, runway one two, clear takeoff. Clear for takeoff on runway one two, right down with departure east of the five freeway six three one Bravo Whiskey. A lot of people ask me, how much prior permission do you need to fly your plane around LA like this? I mean, can you just fly wherever and whenever you want? And the basic oversimplified answer, thanks to general aviation advocacy groups like AOPA and the EAA, is yes, you can fly just about anywhere you want at any time. And in good weather, you don't need advanced permission at all. You just radio the tower before you enter their airspace. This short 23 mile hop from the valley over the hill takes me through Van Nuys airspace, which was particularly busy today. Tricky one Bravo Whiskey, for exchange of Van Nuys crew, good day. Thanks a lot, one Bravo Whiskey. November zero Whiskey, Romy, I'm gonna get you out momentarily. Van Nuys Tower, Cherokee 631 Bravo Whiskey, 545 interchange, southbound transition. Alright, 631 Bravo Whiskey, Van Nuys Tower, transition approved, Van Nuys altimeter 3001. 3001, one Bravo Whiskey. The left traffic pattern for Van Nuys runway 16 left, commonly used by student pilots, means that there are a lot of planes coming in the opposite direction for my southbound transition. We're looking at Critical Zulu. Thank you, turn left base immediately. Traffic is uh, 12 o'clock and quarter mile turn left immediately. I think left, left the Yankee. Number one, Bravo Whiskey, remain on the east side of the 405 freeway for our downwind traffic. Oh uh, yeah, east side of the 405, that's where I'm at, I saw him on Broad Whiskey. Uh, five, remain on the west side of the 405 freeway for opposite direction traffic. Traffic inside was on the west side of the 405, 3065. Number zero, Whiskey, Romeo, clear for immediate takeoff. A lot of guys yeah, over here at Van Nuys in the, the pattern. Two, it's kind of a good thing I know that you're supposed to stay on the east side of the freeway because it probably would have been too late down. at that point. That guy was pretty close and uh, I knew what he was doing. I'm definitely surprised he didn't give me an altitude restriction or a squat code. They usually do transitioning Van Nuys here, but I think that's probably because he's really busy. He's got guys lined up, I can see on the ADSB. Van Nuys usually restricts low altitude transitioning aircraft to below 1,800 feet since we cross right through Burbank's ILS runway 8 approach path. I'll clear the ILS now so I can start climbing. I'll try to pick two, I'll be getting you going shortly. By the way, if you like behind the scenes type stuff or want my expert tips on GoPro settings and mounts to film your own flights, head on over to the SoCal Flying Monkey Patreon site for lots of that type of content. Patreon.com slash SoCal Flying Monkey. We're coming out of their airspace and gonna transition over to Santa Monica. You should hand us off any minute. I'll put the Santa Monica frequency on. 52, cross runway 16 left at Charlie, runway 16 right, line up and wait. I'll climb to just under the, um, the Burbank Charlie here. Under 3,000. All right, we're out of Van Nuys airspace, so if he's so busy, he's not going to hand me off. Van Nuys Tower, check 631, Bravo, what's going to change frequency to Santa Monica? That's correct, and continue to turn left cross. Santa Monica Tower, check 631, Bravo, Whiskey, support for the pass inbound with Sierra. November 631, Bravo, Whiskey, Santa Monica Tower, inner right base, runway 21, squawk 0230. Right base, runway 210231, Bravo Whiskey. All right, so he wants us on a right base, 21. Well, there's the traffic. There was no traffic today. This is unusual. Usually those freeways are jammed in the morning. Man, the views here are awesome. I got downtown over there. We got the beaches and the Santa Monica Mountains over here, and I can see Westwood, and uh, it's just beautiful. 
Cloud number one, Bravo Whiskey, wind 210 at Niner, runway 21, clear to land. Clear to land on runway 21, 631, Bravo Whiskey. Oh, I'm just going to follow that freeway and enter a right base for runway 21. Pretty much over the uh, 405-10 freeway interchange over there. And I'll slowly descend down to pattern altitude. Okay, Santa Monica, altimeter 3000, wind 210 at Niner. We got a direct headwind of nine knots, so that should be really nice. Now we're at pattern altitude here. And start descending even more on this base leg. Five hundred. I love making this turn to final at Santa Monica where the runway and the beach come into full view through the windscreen. Yes, undercarriage, mixture, power. Pop seatbelt safety items, switches. We got the gumps check is done. Looking a little high, but this airplane really likes to descend, so <laughs> be alright. But yeah, it's looking really good. Love flying into Santa Monica. Oh man, that is that was so fun and awesome. Landing at Santa Monica is just it's just such a great place to to come land. Even though there's a landing fee and they shorten the runway, it's kind of still worth it. And you're landing towards the ocean and you got the ocean breeze when you land and open the window. Santa Monica is pretty awesome, and um, I love making that hop over here. So this trip was extremely impractical to fly my own airplane. Just a few miles doesn't really make any sense, but I'm thinking about this a lot and sometimes aviation in your life won't make any practical sense, but it's so much fun and if you're passionate about it, it's just totally worth it. I, I know a lot of people when they're buying an airplane, they worry about like how much money they're putting in, how much money they're gonna get out of it. And I never really thought of it that way as like a return on investment. The return on the investment is the fun that you have with aviation, no matter how you're going about it. If you are if you have your own plane or you're part of a flying club or if you rent, sometimes you, you, can't you can't think about it just in terms of numbers and practicality, even though that is a lot of times how my mind thinks. Sometimes you have to throw that stuff completely out the window and just do something because, because it's super fun. But for all you numbers people like me, here's how it breaks down. Driving from my house to Santa Monica would take anywhere between 45 minutes and an hour. So let's just say one hour for worst case scenario. But to fly to Santa Monica, all I have to do is drive to the airport, pre-flight the plane, taxi the runway and do the run up, fly to Santa Monica, taxi, park, secure the plane, and scooter to the color session. Driving one way will use about one gallon of gas that costs 375. Flying will use 3.8 gallons at about 4.20 a gallon for $16 plus the Santa Monica landing fee for another $18 or so, which averages to a one-way cost of $25. So flying takes about half an hour longer and costs about $21 more each way if the car traffic is bad. Like I said, it doesn't really make any sense, but it sure is fun. Thanks for coming along on the journey with me.